Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I weave a Hongyan Paracord bracelet. All right. Here's a few I've done. Now, these have stitching. I'm not going to show you the stitching in this video. That'll be the next video. I'm going to simply show you how to do the weaving. Okay, but here's some that I've done. Here's one. This one, the core strands are burnt orange, which you don't see very much of them. And the accent, if you could call it that, is black. And I've done the stitching in Imperial Red, and if you can see it, there's a piece of Imperial Red running down either side. That's one of them. Here's one I did that's, um, <clears throat> let's see, what is this? Steel gray, ivy green, and I stitched it in colonial blue. And you can see that piece of colonial blue running down through there. A little bit better. It contrasts more. All right. And then the one we're going to do today is this one right here. It's smoke gray, midnight blue. It's got the gold stitching down the middle. And it's stitched on the side and also in smoke gray. But this one is not a very difficult weave. It's, it, I wouldn't say it's a beginner level, but it's not. It would be, if you're trying to look into something a little bit more advanced, this would be one I think you could do. I think you, you, you could try out and give it a try. But if you want to see how I weave this, and all the tips and tricks that this channel is known for, stick around, folks, because we'll get right into it. Okay, weavers, I'm back. I'm set up. I'm ready to go. But first things first, shameless plug. Links modified. I'll leave the link to the tutorial in the cards and the description below. Here's the latest one I've put on the channel. This is a fishtail belly or a belly fishtail. I just call it a fish belly. But it has a cobra inlay, meaning it's interwoven while you're doing the bracelet, not stitched afterwards. I've got a tutorial for the bracelet itself and then a separate one for the stitching down the sides. Also, in the cards, description below. Okay, now, with that said, as always, all the measurements and everything, all the specifications are in the description below. Check out some of the other links that are down there. I always put all kind of links down there. Okay, let's see. Um, This one, credit where credit's due, and I hope I pronounced this correct is Sato Garcia and the bracelet itself is known as a Hongyan. I had to look it up to see how to pronounce it and in doing so I got a, gained a little a little tidbit of trivial knowledge if you will. I'm not sure what the designer had in mind when he designed this weave and named it but it could be either referring to a 7th century Buddhist monk or a 17th century Chinese artist or simply the word translates into English as celebrity. Okay, there's that. Um, okay. This one, I'm doing it on a 15 millimeter brush brass buckle or a 5 8 inch equivalent. It could be put on a 20 millimeter or a three quarter inch equivalent. It could be put on one of those. It's not, um, that three quarter inch buckle wouldn't be too oversized for the width of this bracelet, in my opinion. Either one would work, but I'm simply going to put it on a 15 millimeter or five eighths inch. Um, let's see, next thing. Okay, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Specification wise, measurement wise, the add to for this one, um, 
it's going to be different. I'll go ahead and tell you. This is one of the weaves where there's a few of them that I've come across that if you simply do the bracelet, your add to is this. But if you stitch it, it changes how you measure it out. It changes that variable, that add to variable. Okay, now for those who may be unfamiliar to what I mean when I say add to. Briefly explained, we all know that when you go to size one of these bracelets, like for example, I have a seven inch wrist. I could not take the seven inch measurement of my wrist and measure that out of my jig. Why? Because it will not fit. It will be too small. You have to add to that measurement. Whatever your wrist measurement plus the add to variable equals what you measure in your jig. Basic formula. Wrist measurement plus add to equals jig measurement. And the reason is because of the thickness of the bracelet. That add to variable is different for every specific weave uh, and it's, it depends on the thickness of the bracelet. And because of the stitching in some of these bracelets, it affects that variable. Therefore, you have to measure it just a little bit more to factor in the stitching. And this is one of them. So if you do it without the stitching, you can take about an eighth of an inch off. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, if anybody's actually seen the pictorial for this bracelet, his add to is two inches. I gave it a little bit more room to make it slightly more comfortable. Hence the two and an eighth inch. For the stitching, it's going to be two and a quarter. That's what I've got down. Okay? Now, like I say, all this depends on your individual weaving style. I say that all the time because my cord measurements are even more than what's given in the pictorial I come across. Okay? So, you know, <clears throat> but I always weave I weave one of these things out three or four times to zero in the numbers I use. And many of you know that I always, always have extra on my measurements. That way I know I can finish it. I don't care if I've got a foot or two of scrap in the end. I want to be able to have enough to finish the weave. Does that make sense? Okay, there's all that. Now let's see. This one right here, it's not a very hard weave. The mechanics are pretty simple and they tightening up because that's, that's, I, you know, I I'll often have people say, I just can't get that one right. Could you do a video for that one? Show us how to tighten that one up. And hence why I started this channel. Like I, like I was telling somebody the other day, um, the mechanics, the over here, under there, that's, that's the easy part for most of on these bracelets. It's how to tighten it all up to get it to look right. That's where people struggle. And unfortunately, many of the tutorials don't mention that, right? And hence why my videos are a little bit longer, and I, I try to give that information. Okay, but with all that said, this one's pretty straightforward. It's not very hard. It, it's, it's pretty simple. There's no trick or anything into tightening this one up other than the fact that the accent cord, you got to do it in steps. You got to tighten it up in stages. And, but many of us know that on a lot of these waves. But this one's not too hard. So hopefully this video won't be very long. Um, setting it up is a four strand cord. If you don't know how to do that, there's a link in the description below to a playlist for, uh, what's it called, Core String Setup Playlist or something like that. Click on that and you'll see all the ones I've done. I've got a four strand, you know, a tutorial for a four strand, and you can see how I do it. Now, I do my four strand setup different than many of the other ones you'll see out there, okay? Okay, now, with all that said, you got two even working ends off, coming off your four strand core. This will be your core strand, and I'm going to refer to this as the accent. Even though the accent covers the main body of the bracelet, and 
it's a longer cord. I still consider it the accent because the core strands are the body of the bracelet, even though you don't see very much of them. Right? Okay. Now, when you set this up, your accent cord, all I've done is run it through the back side of this initial cow hitch when you set up your four-string core. I set up cow hitch, run down, double cow hitch to the bottom, and come back up with my two locking knots. Right? But it's only ran through this hitch. It's not ran through the back side of these locking knots. It's just through those hitches. Because the first thing we do is we're going to bring them up through the center strands. So just already have them on the center instead of coming out the sides. Okay, now with that, let's see. There is one thing that's kind of different. When I start, when I first did this one, I realized, well, this is kind of different. And I was like, hmm. So I kind of changed up the steps from the tutorial. It's the same mechanics, I just kind of put the, the steps in a slightly different order to make it a little easier to weave. Normally, I'll, I'll show you this. Normally, on one of these bracelets where your two strands, they'll cross over. They, they most likely will be interwoven somehow over here, under there, through the main core strands, right? The working ends will be woven through the core strands and pulled and, right? Well, this one, they don't do that. And they simply get crossed on the back side of the bracelet. They don't actually go through the core strands. And when I was waving it, they kept wanting to, you know, normally the tension of the core strands will hold them there so you can, you know, weave your accent in and around and through it. Well, since they're not being held there, they kind of fell out, you know, they, I was like, I'm like, you know what, let's just do this differently. So. Instead of doing that as the first step, like many of these weaves done, and even in his pictorial, he shows you just doing that on the first step. Well, I, I was like, you know what, let's do it slightly different. That way it's it's more efficient, I guess. It makes the weave slightly easier. But other than that, this one's pretty simple. Okay, I'll show you. Now, as always, I, well, not as always, as most of the time, I went ahead and put the fids on the end of these accent pieces, just so hopefully it'll make it a little easier. You can see the overs and the unders and all that. But like I say, this was pretty straightforward. It's nothing real complicated. <coughs> this is one, you know, I would recommend something like this for somebody who... They're new to it. They're still kind of... This is something I think not a complete beginner, but somebody who's been doing it a little while who wants to try to move up to something more advanced besides a fishtail or a trilobite or a cobra weave or all the variations of a cobra. This would be something I would recommend because it's not too hard. It's not. It's, the mechanics aren't that hard. And the tightening up process is not that hard. Alright? Okay, so with all that said, I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's zoom in and uh, we'll get going. Like I said, this one's not going to be very long because it's not that hard of a weave. We can get this thing to focus. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take our two accent cords. Right? Like I said, even working ends, even accent cord. We're going to take our two accent cords, and all we're going to do, we're going to split the rails right down the middle. Right through the middle of the core string, you're going to bring them both up. Pull all your excess through. And when you get right here, I found it to do. Now this first one's going to be a little kind of, because you they're not going to want to sit. You want these two blue pieces right next to each other. You don't want one higher than the other. You want them even right there. Now this first one, just because it's so tight right there, they're not going to do it very well. So, you know, just kind of manhandle it and get it up there. And if they're not like that, it's okay. We can fix it in just a second. Alright, we say that? Now, you find the end. Doesn't matter which one you do. We'll go over to the left one. Find, in, find your working end. And all you're going to do is from the 
the left working end, all you're going to do is go under that first core string and come up through that slot. I'm pulling your slide through. Alright, mindful of the twist and this big loop that you've created right here, leave that there because that's what we're going to feed our main working in through, right? And that's it. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Take your right end, your, your right working end of your accent, and find the end of it, and coming from the right side, go under the first core string and up through that first slot. I'm pull your excess through. Mindful of your twist and leave this loop right here. Leave the leave the loop. Now once you start doing it, you'll say, okay, I need to I you know, it doesn't have to be crazily big, but just leave your two loops right there. Now, these two loops, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take doesn't matter which one goes first or second, because they're not being interwoven into the core strings. So you're going to take the working end from the main body of the bracelet, the core string working end on the left side, and all you're going to do is go on the back side. Alright, I'll show you this. See, i got these two loops. I'm going to just bend them down there so the, right, and I'm going to take that working end off of this left side, and I'm going to go through those loops up under all the core strands. I'm just kind of pull it through. And do the same thing on this side, on the right side, find the end of it. I go through those two loops again. And that's the mechanics of this. Now to tighten it up, it's pretty easy. The way I've been doing it, since you can't normally, you would kind of tighten these first. Well, there's there's nothing holding them there, right? So what I'm gonna do is go back up here, and where I come through the middle right here, make sure those are tight. Now, when you start doing this, this is it. This is the first place you tighten up. Then, just take the two working ends off your accent and just kind of. Loose sense pulling out the excess. I'm going to get it up there. Grab the two working ends of the core, the ones that come off the core, and just pull them. Give them a little sense down. All right? And then just whichever one you want. It doesn't matter. Right or left, go first. When you do it, make sure that these two pieces, these two places, pieces that have come through the center, make sure that they're they're meeting. They're not offset. They're right next to each other. Now, like I say, this first one's a little hard to get it to be perfect, but just mess with it. Right? Now that you got it straight, you just tighten it up. I'm holding my fingers here, pushing down toward the table, and I'm pulling it straight up toward the camera. And now switch hands and do the same thing on the other side. And that's it. That's all there is to this, but I'm going to tighten these back up just to get everything good and snug. And that's the first rep right there. That's it. And we're going to continue doing that all the way down. Okay, now, I'll show you. The strands were, were already on the back side and they come up the accent cords. They were already on the back side when we started and we brought them up through this middle slot. Well, the way we're going to do this, we're going to take the two strands and we're going to wrap around. And if you look, if this thing will focus, you can see right here on this edge where that gray comes out and it forms these two little pieces. And then just below it, these the work against come out. Right in that little groove in between there is where you're going to run these. And you're just going to wrap them around the sides. And bring both of them, keeping, keeping the right one on the right side and the left one on the 
left side. Right? And the way I was I, I was doing this is getting it in there. Make sure it's in that little groove. And just kind of giving it a little tug. And doing the other one. Make sure it's in that groove right there and giving it a little tug. And when you do, the sheer fact that they're right next to each other will kind of keep them up there. Held in place as opposed to kind of wanting to come loose. Does that make sense? Get them up there in the groove. Pull it up. Do the other one. Pull it up. And they'll kind of hold themselves. All right Now pull all your excess of both your accent cords through. It's separate them. <coughs> and again, we'll start on the left side. We'll find the end of this one. This left one coming up through between the core strands. From the left side, we go under the first core strand and up. We just pull our excess through. Right? And we just leave that loop right there. Doesn't have to be big, like I say, just, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. See how they've fallen. That's all right though. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. But leave you some slack because we're going to tighten it up here in a second and leave that loop open in the back. Now we're just going to do the other side. The one coming up through the middle of the core strands, the right side, find the end of it. And coming from the right side, you're just going to go under that four, first core strand and go up through that first slot. I just pull pull it through. Leaving a little leaving the loop back here because we're gonna go through it. Alright, okay. Now now that we get right here, we're gonna take our grays. Oh, I mean I should have said this. This is smoke gray and this is midnight blue. And I'm gonna do some stitching on this one with uh some gold and some more smoke gray. Y'all probably seen some of the bracelets I post on social medias in those colors. They look really, really well together. Okay, now. Working end of the main core, uh, or the working end of the core strand. Just going to go through those two loops back there that are on the back side right there. Just going to go through those loops and pull through. Now we're going to take the right one, find its end, and do the same thing. Go through those two loops. That's pretty, and that's it. Now, what I'll do is like this. I'm going to take these, and I'm going to make sure these two little wraparounds are tight by pulling these two pieces right here. Just kind of pull it. And when I pull it, I'll put my thumb right there, and that'll, that'll maintain that little bit of tension. It'll stay there, right? And I just reach over here, right or left, doesn't matter which one you do first. We just got to tighten them both up. And just kind of loose cinch it up, and then loose cinch the other side. Now go to your grays and pull them through. Using my thumbs to push off as I'm holding and tighten it up. I push it, push it up, and reach up there and hold it down, pushing it down that way as I'm pulling toward the camera. Kind of do the other side that same way. And when you do it, make sure those two blue pieces that come up through the center, make sure they're next to each other and they're not, you know, offset. They, they want to be right next to each other. And that's it. That's all there is to this one. You know, you kind of push it up, look at it, make sure both sides look the same. Like these two gray pieces, make sure you've pulled them with an equal amount of tension so those two little gray bumps that are on the side, one's not sticking way out and the other one's not sticking out far enough. All right? And that's it. That's the second repetition. I'll do it again. We'll take... Right side, accent color, just wrap it around going in that little, that little groove right there between this gray piece right here and where this one's coming out, just right in that groove. 
Go right around the back. Bring it up through the middle of the core strands. Pulling your excess out and do the other one the same way. Wrapping around through that groove. Coming up in the middle of the core strands. Pulling it up. Now when you get right here, you can kind of take it. You know, if you need to, you can reach up there and kind of pinch it as you're get it in that groove and then kind of pull it. Now you know it may it may stay there, like I say, having those two pieces right next to each other. There's enough tension that they stay there a lot of the times. But if not, we'll fix it in a second. On the left side, find the end of it. Come from the left side under the first core strand and up to that first slot, pulling your excesses through. Leaving that loop this right there. Leaving that loop got kind of a twist. We're gonna get that out. I'm gonna twist it right here to get that out. Leaving that loop. Leaving you some excess here to make sure this is all tight. Leaving that loop. Now we'll go to the other side. Find the end of it. Coming from the right side under the first cool string and up to the slot. And we pull our excess through. Alright. Leaving you something here to make sure we can tighten this wrap around up. Leaving that loop because we're going to go through it with a grace. The two loops go through the loops, but behind, underneath, under all four core strands, and just pull it through. And then do the same thing on the right side. Do those two big blue loops under all four core strands. And that's it. Right? Reach up there and kind of make sure you get these two tight. And then take the main, the main ends of your accent. Just kind of give it a loose cinch up to the top. Kind of get everything in place. Grab your gray ones and just pull them. Right. Push everything up. And again, just pull it straight up. That's all you got to do is pull it straight up. Making sure... These two blue pieces that are coming from the middle, in between those core strands, make sure they're next to each other. They're not going to sit like this. They're going to sit at an angle. But you want them right next to you. Not like this, not like that. All right? And just give it a little tug. Give it a little tug. And that's it. That's all there is to this one. And you just continue it out. I'll do this a couple more times. I'll zoom out. Do it a couple times, let you watch me do it, and we'll be done. And I'll, well, I'll come back and show you how I finished this one. This was kind of tricky. Eh, kind of tricky to finish it up, just because the way the back of this bracelet ends up looking. Um, you gotta kind of be careful for, with the cut and burns, and how, how you back weave it up into there, or whatever. But, it's not, it's not really that hard. I'll show you, I'll show you again. Let's see. I'll back out one more time. Let's see. Back out all the way and go in. There we go. Taking those, wrapping it around in that groove. See that right there? It's not right there in that groove like I want it. Alright. Just wrapping it around and going up to the middle. Pulling the excess through, wrapping it around in that groove. Doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly in that groove because we'll fix it in a second. When we actually go to do our, our tight cinch on it, we'll we'll fix it. All right, pull it through, find the end. Left left working end. Left working end from the left side under the first core string up through the slot, pulling the excess through, leaving a loop. Leaving some slack here and with this loop. And now we do the other side. On the right side, we find the end of our cord. We go under that first cool strand and up through the first slot, pulling our excess through. Leaving a little loop. We get right here. We take our two grays. And why I do it is I just reach through there and switch hands. 
do it like that in kind of one one motion. Now we we'll get right here. I'm gonna kind of pull. I'm gonna cinch the right side up so it fits down in that groove. Like I said, you can reach up there with my finger. I'm kind of holding it in place right there with my finger. I don't have to squeeze it. Just pull it tight and then reach right there and it'll hold it. Or however, you know, you can put your thumb there. Do the same thing over here. Kind of pull it. There you go. And then you just kind of tighten it up. Loose cinch right there. And then take your grays and pull them. When you get right here, push it up, making sure those two pieces of blue are sitting right next to each other. Not wonky, catawomp, you know, offset, off, whatever. And we'll make sure these two blows, little ridges on the side are kind of even. Make sure they're even. And that's it. We do it again. Accent cord working in, just wrap it around, kind of up through the middle of all the core strands, pull your excess through, same thing here, wrapping it around and coming through the core strands, pull your excess through. And since I already had my hands on it, I'm going to just continue on under that first core strand up through the slot. Leaving enough to work with, switching over to this side. On that first core strand up through that up through that slot, pulling the majority of the excess through. You can kind of get right here, we'll kind of straighten it up just a little bit. Running them gray core strands through those two loops and pulling them through. Okay, now when we get here, we're gonna make see how they kind of there's two blue pieces are sticking out, we gotta fix that. Just kind of reach up there. Make sure it's going down in that groove, pulling it, like I said, holding it, holding it with my finger right there, just sort of stay in place, doing the same thing over here, getting it where we want it, and then pulling it tight, like that, and then whichever side, it doesn't matter, just kind of give it a little loose cinch, and that'll, that'll keep everything up there, and then do the same thing on the other side, and then pull your grays. Let's shake everything up, making sure there's two blue pieces are, you know, even. Those didn't want to even up right. I'll come back with my knotter's tool and I'll kind of manhandle it in there so that it'll look right and they'll, they'll sit even. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. I'll do this one more time. We can just wrap around. Excess. I'll just go ahead and go up under there. Get that twist out. Wrapping it around. Coming up through the middle. Pulling it through. Taking that end, under that first quarter hand up through the slot, pulling pulling out the majority of the excess. When you get right here, all right, take your gray strands and run them through the loops on the back. Now, we're going to tighten it up. Make sure that blue piece is in that little groove where you want it. Maybe you can get up and kind of push it, put a little pressure and get it to seat in that little groove. And then do your other one the same way. When you get them there. Loose cinch on one side. Loose cinch on the other. Pulling your grays tight, pushing it up, and then tightening it, doing the tight cinch. 
That's it. That's all there is to this one. It's pretty simple, and it's a really, really good. You can say, I'll zoom in and let you get a look at this. See how it ends up, even though these are the core strands, and this is the accent, the accent ends up becoming pretty much the color of the main body of the bracelet. Makes sense. But um, I'm going to run this one out to the end. I'm going to weave this one out to the end. And when I get down there close to the end, like always, I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to finish this one off. And, uh, you know, work on that. Make you one of these. And, um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'll, I'll film the stitching video for this one also, and uh, hopefully I'll have it, you know, by the time this one's up on YouTube, either the same day or the next day, I'll have the stitching one up, so, but stick around and I'll show you how I finish it off. Okay, Weavers, I'm back. I got this thing woven out to the very end, and I've done one full complete repetition. And I've got just a little bit of room left, okay? I'm going to show you how I'll finish this one up and back weave it into the back, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do it right here on the jig. I'll zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to do is, it's a technique, you know, put this in your in your back of your brain housing group, but in your tool belt, and you know, consider this. Like I said, you know, a lot of times the beginning of the weave and the bottom of the weave is never going to look exactly the same, or I should say, is not always going to look exactly the same as the meat of the weave itself, the meat of the bracelet. But we try our best to keep the pattern, the weave pattern, consistent from beginning to end. But just because of the nature of sometimes the way we have to finish it off, we can't do that, right? Okay, so with that said, just remember, this is a technique you can use. Like a weave like this, where those that accent cord gets wrapped around, and then it comes up and it wraps around again, what you can sometimes do is instead of doing uh, a full, uh, all, all the steps in that repetition for that, you know that 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 knot I guess because you don't have enough room you can only do you know perhaps do half the steps that way it still looks consistent but you're not trying to cram all your cords down through there and it, it gets really 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 tight at, at the end hopefully that made sense what I was what I'm trying to say you just kind of do, instead of doing, like, just for example, say there's eight steps to this repetition, to this knot. Well, we don't have enough room to complete the entire eight steps, so we do half of them. Or, you know, six of the eight, or three of the eight, just whatever, what, whatever, and you do it. That way, you kind of maintain a consistent-looking pattern, but yet, you don't finish it out, and you get all your, cord, your cords on the back side. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. But what I'm going to do right here, all I'm going to do is, like I say, I'm gonna, I ain't going to complete this entire repetition of all these steps, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two blue ones like we did before, wrap them around, put them in that little groove here. Let me zoom in so maybe you can see as I'm trying to explain what I'm doing here. That little groove where that gray bump piece is and this gray piece coming out, you would just wrap the blue around like, we, like you've done all the way down the edge. Right, and then you bring it up. Now, I can't quite see. The camera can see it, but I can't quite see it. I'm looking at a, a slanted angle. <coughs> but we bring it up like we did before. Same, same thing, just like before, right? Pull it up. Now we do the other one the same way. We wrap it around, put it in, the, seating it down in that little groove. I'm bringing it up from the back in between those two core strands. Let me get right here so I can see. Okay? Everything's the same, just as before. Right? Kind of pull it and pull it. Now what I'm going to do here is where it gets, I'm going to deviate from the normal steps. 
All I'm going to do is take these two gray pieces and bend them back there. And I'm going to take these two blue pieces. And basically what this, the purpose of this is to fill in, to cover up that very last tip of those two core strands that you can see. That, that's pretty much why I'm doing this. And you take it and you just wrap them around right here at the end. Now you're going to take all four of these cords that are just wrapped around and you're going to back weave them up into the back of the bracelet, making sure they're tight and back weave them up in there. Okay? That's it. But I'll show you how I do this. Because this one, like I said, the back side of this one's kind of... It, it, first first couple of times I did this weave, I was like, hmm, how, how do I... How can I get that in there right? And uh, to back weave it. But I got it in there. But I'll zoom out. We'll take this off the jig. You can watch it jump like always. See how much tension I had on there? Alright. Get the jig out of the way. I'll right, zoom back in. And I'll show you. Here's, let's see. Here's the front of it. Like I was saying in the, in the first part of the video, the core strands, the smoke gray, pretty much get covered up by the accent, that secondary midnight blue accent cord. So the bracelet basically looks like it's midnight blue. And you just have a little bit of that gray showing through on the sides and right there in the middle. All right, but I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to flip it over. You can see the back of it. Now, if you look, it's just kind of funny the way this is the way this is to try to get these to wrap around and then push them up in there. But what I'm gonna do, my my plan is to take these two blue, the blue and the gray that's on, on that side, and I'll run them up under, let's see, one, one of these pieces of blue, or this, or two of these pieces of blue. When I say, I'm talking about the one that comes, like, like this piece of blue here, how it comes all the way around, and then this one all the way around, up under those two, either one, the first one, or both of them. Not sure yet exactly. Alright, so what we'll do, I'm going to look at this. Let's get the light over here a little bit. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the blue one. It's on that side. And we'll just run it up under that first piece of blue right here. But I'm going to do it. Now you see, that piece of blue, you see how it's actually this cord right here. Wait a minute, my bad. It's this one. It's, it's, it's wrapping back up under itself. That's what I'm trying to get at. Alright, so once we do this, we're going to have to tight, make, tighten that one back up. We're going to run this through here. Right? And then this gray one, you can just run it up under there. You don't even need a fig because it's loose. Just run it up under there. Is that going to work right? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did that wrong. Scratch all that, I did that wrong. I, I thought something didn't look right. Alright, let me try, let me let me undo all this and start over. Okay, right here. Tighten it up like it was. Okay. I'm going to run it 
up under I'm gonna I'm gonna run it up under two of the bows. And that one right there is gonna loosen up because like I said it's this cord. You're just wrap, wrapping it back under itself. But we just wrap it under there and then the second the second one going under that's the one that's kind of tight. So we just stick it up under there. And if we look, see if I can show you this. The cord right here that we just went up under there with. See this little blue piece here? You want the cord you just run up under there, you want it over here toward the center of the bracelet. Best you can get it. See that? Now we'll get us a, a fid and put on this piece of gray and run it up under there. Now when I do this one, I'm going to do it toward the edge of the bracelet over here. I say that. Now hopefully this is going to work right. I'm trying to do it in such a way that the sides of it, the side and this front piece is going to kind of maintain the pattern of the rest of the bracelet. I'm going to pull it. See right here now, see it kind of maintains that. I'm, here, get, I'm going to tighten this up here in a second. Let me do this. That one that we ran up under. This is it right here. This piece, we, the first one we ran up under, it goes through the bracelet and it comes out right here. So I'm going to tighten that up on itself. Take these little pliers I have and just kind of, and it'll tighten that piece up. And then right here, pull out that slide. Yeah, see, now, right here, that's what we ended up doing. And it, it's not the exact same, but it kind of has the same, almost the same. But that's what I'm trying to do. Keep it looking, and then you see where they end, right? I'm going to do basically the same thing with this other one. The other side, I'm going to take this blue that's coming out, and I'm going to wrap it around this way. I'm going to go up under that first one. And again, that piece right there, that first one we're going to go up under is the same cord. So we'll have to come back and tighten that up a little bit. And again, we want to keep this piece of blue toward the center. And this one is going to be on the outside edge. So we'll go up under one, and then that next piece of blue will go up under. I see that, and we'll just pull it through. Don't pull it all the way through because we got to have something to grab onto to tighten it back up on itself. Okay? Now I'm going to just go ahead and take this fit off. I'm going to put it on this piece of gray so I can get it up under there. Yeah, I might have to. Maybe not. Yeah, I think I can use that. All right now we're going to run it, run it, this piece of gray back up under, or up under, not back, but up under those same two pieces that that blue's under. But we're going to keep it toward the edge of the bracelet. You see that? Now we just push it through. I just kind of the nature of the thing is this piece of gray, it's going to disappear up under there. In a sense, that gray one is really only going up under that one because it's, it's beyond the point of where this blue is. But now we're going to tighten up that blue on itself, so we have to do it on this front side like we just did. Grab a hold of it with my little 
chain nose jewelers pliers. Just grabbing a hold of all I'm doing is grabbing a hold of these things don't have any teeth on them. So they're very less likely to snag. But all I do is I'll grab a hold of it. It's the same principle as like a knotter's tool. You can tighten it up. But I use these because you can get it really tight. Just grab a hold of it and just kind of roll it over. And it just it cranks down the cranks it down back in the back. And then when you get it tight, you just reach up here. We're going to take that out by pulling on this. We we'll see that now. We've got the gray that's on this side, and then the blue closest to the center, then the blue and the gray on this side, the blue being closest to the center and the gray. We we'll see how it did that. That's all there is to that. Now, like I said, this weave's not that hard. And it looks really good. I'll show you the front of it, how it finished up. How it, it it's it's not perfect the same pattern, but it it's close. It's close. But I'm gonna back it out. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and cut these. Like I always do. I'm gonna cut them. But I am going to stitch it, so I'm going to leave me little nubs, little tails right there. Inch, inch and a half, two inches or something like that. That way, this is not getting in my way when I'm trying to stitch. But I'm not cut, doing a final cut and burn because I don't want that big hard lump of plastic right there. Because it may prohibit me from getting my needle through there. So that's why I do that. And now, now I'll take these, because I don't like those loose frayed ends. I just kind of take them and separate them just a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back. I just melt the ends over, not shaping them or anything like. Cause I'm not gonna put a fit on them. They're eventually just gonna get cut off and thrown in the trash. But I just don't want them frayed and loose and all that. I just let it cool off, and that's it. That's that's how I finish that one. Now, even though, like I said in the very beginning. I'm going to come back and stitch this, and the sizing for this is slightly different than after I stitch it, right? So I've I've sized it up, but this one is not be excuse me. This one is not being sized for my seven inch wrist. This one's being sized for a seven and three quarter. I think is what it was. Seven and three quarters inch wrist. Is, I think is what it was, but. I'm going to put it on this mandrel and let you see. I'm going to get my little mandrel. I'm going to put it on here. And we're going to see what the size is. Yeah, that's going to work right there. You see the 8 inch mark. And that thing, it goes down right there to that 8 inch mark. But after I do that stitching, it's going to tighten it up a little bit. So it's not going to go quite as far down. It's going to be right there where I want it, right? But, that's how I weave a Hongyan by Sateo Garcia. But I appreciate you watching. Give us a like, give us a share. Leave a comment below. What, what do you want to see me do a tutorial on? And uh, if you want to see how I do the stitching here, I'll show you the stitching. Here's one I did. Let's see, where's... Where's that other one at? Oh yeah, here it is. Here's one I did. What is this? Steel gray, ivy green, and colonial blue. And then this one is burnt orange black, and the stitching is imperial red. But I'm going to do it here. You can see it better on this one. You can see that stitching better on this one. That's the pattern I'm going to do on the stitching. So I'll have that video made and uploaded eh, well in a, a day or two. Maybe the same day that I upload this video. So, you know, keep your eye out. 
Make this one. Figure out how to make this one. Remember, you got to size it slightly bigger if you're going to do the stitching. But I appreciate you watching, and I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat, keep it clean, and keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.